<laughs> I thought this was going to be a straightforward video. Maybe there's no such thing as a straightforward video. Hi there, Jeremy here from veganinteractions.com. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to talk to you about a fundamental issue that I think the animal movement is missing. Now, for most of you who are already animal advocates, I suspect you've either come up with your own ways to approach outreach conversations and messaging, or you've observed other animal advocates and seen how they approach things. Now, across the board from grassroots activists to academics, I've noticed a surprising lack of focus on the, to me, what is the fundamental wrong, which is the breeding. Now, when I say the fundamental wrong, I don't necessarily mean that in that very instant is the most morally reprehensible thing that we do to our fellow animals. But what I do mean is in a very practical sense, everything we do to them after that point is because they were bred in the first place. This to me is the paradox of the idea of animal rights. Because I think for most of us who are drawn to this philosophy, it's underpinned by a deep respect for our fellow animals. And the key message is to stop breeding our fellow animals and stop their lives in the first place. While this may seem a bit counterintuitive on the surface, given there's approximately 200 species of our fellow animals who go extinct every single day, and the leading cause of species extinction is animal use, the overall animal community will benefit when we stop breeding, using, and killing them. Plus some other ideas we'll get into here in a little bit, but the whole idea is to pursue harmonious relationships with our fellow animals, which means letting the individuals who are here do their thing and not breeding others into existence. Now, when I look at the way that most animal advocates focus on things, they typically focus on the so-called pain or the negative experiences our fellow animals endure. Also, from a rights-based perspective, I think some of us also focus on the, the pleasures or the array of emotions and all these great things that our fellow animals can experience. I think we have to acknowledge that. But I think both of these are limiting our message. On the negative side of the equation, I think when we focus on the suffering, cruelty, abuse, torture, mutilation, all these words really focus on the treatment rather than ending all use. And even if we don't mean to, I think there's a high likelihood that we're going to pull ourselves into that welfare paradigm. Because even if this is one of 27 things we mention, non-vegans are going to focus in on what they're comfortable discussing. And that's going to be animal welfare over most other things. So they're going to say, oh, well, they don't suffer. And then maybe we can have that conversation. But I think at that point, we've kind of already lost the main thread. You know, think of some of the common questions in the movement. You know, there's no such thing as humane killing. While we agree there isn't, I think when we're having those discussions, we're inviting people to think, well, how can we kill them humanely? And I don't think that's where we want to go. I think even from a rights-based perspective, when we're making a case for why our fellow animals do in fact have a valid claim to basic moral rights, it's tempting to talk about the joy and all these positive experiences they can have. I don't think we want to do that either, because this makes a case for breeding them. Now, the breeding applies for the vast majority of animal use. However, obviously, for our fellow animals who are already here who have been bred, ideally, we could take them to a sanctuary. Although, let's be honest, most of them are already full. And then from a free-living being perspective, we could talk about, you know, so-called wild animal suffering and what we can do to advocate for free-living beings. Now, while I think this should be a part of the discussion, to me, this is part of the overall scope, and it shouldn't be our focus or the predominant use of our time. Because largely, it's not that practicable to end wild animal suffering or even reduce it. Now, I did a video a while back where um, two individuals were talking past each other, and one was talking about ending animal exploitation, one was talking about ending suffering, and I think the message just got completely lost. And I think that's also happening when we start to talk about the breeding. I mean, how many advocates even mention it? And when they do, is it a foundation of their claims making, or is it a bit of an afterthought? All right, now I said I was going to keep this video on the shorter side, so let's talk about the practical applications for our animal advocacy. First, if we're making a t-shirt, we probably want to include it on the t-shirt itself. Now, when it comes to our outreach conversations and our messaging, the way I like to frame things is that all animals are unique individuals who are worthy of respect, which means not breeding, using, or killing them. And specifically, not breeding them for a net negative life. Now let's examine that for a minute. What does it mean to not breed someone for a net negative life? Put crudely, it's simply that the negative experiences outweigh the positive ones. Now, I would argue across the board, when humans are facilitating the breeding of our fellow animals, we're doing it for our wants and needs and not theirs. Let's talk about this situation we hear about often about the um, animal users or um, farmers who you know, love their animals. And I have no doubt that some of them may feel that their animals have a good life and then they send them off on a truck 
they don't see that side of things, which I think is another interesting thing to explore, maybe in another video, how farmers insulate themselves from the killing. But even in that instance, if we took away the profit motive, would farmers still be breeding these animals into existence? I don't think they would be. To me, this shows this is more of an explanation rather than a valid reason to be breeding our fellow animals. I think if we're to look at pain versus pleasure, and again, put very crudely because this is meant to be a short video, if we look at pain as those experiences we want to end, and pleasure as those times when we want experiences to keep going, I think it's very difficult to speak to someone else's experiences. However, at its essence, the vast majority of animal use includes breeding them for our purpose. And yes, I mean so-called pets too. So as animal advocates, let's start talking about the breeding in our advocacy, not just as an afterthought, but as a fundamental claim that we should be ending it altogether. Coming up later this week, I'm going to be having a live discussion with Vegan Ariel, and we'll be focusing on how to navigate human issues while campaigning for our fellow animals. That's at 6 p.m. UK time this Friday. And the best way to stay in the loop on that stuff, if you haven't already, is to hit that subscribe button, and then you'll see it come up in your YouTube feed once I schedule it. Thank you for all the liking and the commenting and the sharing. It really helps this little channel and hopefully get some of these ideas out there that I think would really benefit our fellow animals. And thank you for all you do for our fellow animals in general. We'll see you in the next one. For free resources, such as a discussion guide and language document, check out veganinteractions.com. Thanks for watching.